On today's Baker Mashup, we're going to find out if 3D printed extrusion like this is a viable option for prototyping printers like this. So you may be interested in actually building or prototyping your own design of 3D printers. One of the difficulties that you're going to find is that there's a lot of cost associated with it. Regular 2020 extrusion like this can be pretty expensive, especially if in many cases you're just going to throw it away or you're going to cut it and resize it. And the end one may not necessarily be exactly what you're going to use for your final printer. So with that, I was looking for some cheap alternatives, and I had tried a number of different ones. Uh, I found a lot of different ones that were available on uh, Thingiverse and Pinshape, different variations of it, uh, V-slot, T-slot. Uh, there was a lot of different types, but what I found was eventually one that worked very well. The tolerances, which you'll find out when printing this, often change how well you're able to build a 3D printer. So I was able to go ahead and find a 3D printed extrusion that I was able to print in bulk. And with my Ender 3, I was able to get that to print at a height of about 200 millimeters. So I had very lengthy pieces that you could combine together. And those pieces then allowed me to put together this prototype that I've been working on. Now, I'll be showing some videos for this prototype later on in some future videos, but for today, we're just going to focus and talk about how you can go ahead and print your own extrusion and use this for your own printer prototyping, or perhaps you might want to use it for other projects where you need something a little bit more flexible than a piece of wood uh, that you can also use as an extrusion, and you know that in the end you can replace it with a, an aluminum version and be up and running with a final version pretty quickly. So let's get to work. You're going to want to head over to Pin Shape. This is where I was able to locate the 2020 T slot extrusion and fixtures. While there are a lot of these available on Thingiverse, this is the only one that I found that worked with standard metal nuts along with the fixtures that they provided as well. Once you download this, you're gonna find that there are a number of files, not only for the 2020 extrusion itself, but as it indicates here, the different fixtures that you can use to bolt everything together. You're gonna to also wanna pick up some M3 nuts I picked up an assortment, which I linked in the description, and it worked pretty well for just about everything here. The next step is to go ahead and print everything out. A stack like this is gonna take almost a full day, and it takes about three days to get everything printed. These actually come as 100 millimeters in length. I just simply extended the Z axis in Cura and made them 200 millimeters in length, but if you have a taller printer, you can extend them as tall as you can print. This is probably the worst of the entire process, and that is the cleanup work for the prints once they come off the printer. You just need to take a cutter and take your time to pull off all the spare plastic from the brim that was holding these quite well to the print bed. I used a brim because these don't have a lot of surface area, and that brim really helped make sure that these did not fail when printing. So now that you have everything printed, the next step here is going to be to join these two shorter extrusions together to make a long one that we'll use for our project here. Now, if you need help with any of this, don't forget to check out our Discord and links for it are in the description. You'll need four of these little plates that join these pieces together. And it's key that you put the two edges that were not printed together. This will give you a good bond. So the maximum you'll really get out of this is about 400 millimeters in length. To push them in, I just tapped them with the edge of a wrench here. You could use a mallet, but the wrench was pretty small and it was helpful if I needed to pull these out. So while not the best tool to use as a hammer, it was quite effective at joining these together. Once you have four of them in there, then you need to wiggle the other end gently in place. I found it helpful if you used your thumb and fingers to hold the ones that are there in place while you're pushing the other one on. Just a little bit of wiggling and these go in and then back to the old wrench to use as a hammer to tap these in gently. 
So far, these feel surprisingly strong given that this is just some PLA plastic. I wanted to assemble this into a cube. This is a cube end attachment that I printed off of Thingiverse. I've linked it in the description. You'll see here I'm using a number 20 wood screw. I did not have any M6 metric screws, which will also work on here and actually tap a little bit better. These were what I had on hand and they worked pretty well. When you switch over to metal extrusion, you're gonna to wanna to use the metric screw instead of these wood screws. These are three-way cubes. Here I've got two ends and I'll attach the third here. I built two squares and then once I had that completed, I put on the four Z axis and then just screwed in the top. Make sure when you put these screws in, you don't apply too much torque and force. Reason being is that this is plastic and it will strip out pretty quickly. And here we have the completed 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter cube. This worked out really well. I was actually quite surprised how sturdy this was considering all of it was 3D printed with the exception of the screws. You can even have a little fun. As you can see here, I used red, white, and blue for the 4th of July holiday. So overall, I think this project is coming along quite well. You can see here as part of a plastic structure versus a, uh, an aluminum structure that there is a little bit of wiggle in here. So it works great for prototyping or if you had a project that you didn't have to really worry about a little bit of wiggle or play. But all things considered, I'm rocking this a fair amount and it actually is very structurally strong. The other thing I found out as well is that when I put stuff like the linear rails on here, the linear rails actually tightened up the frame and then also these corner pieces really tighten up the frame as well. So as a prototyping tool or as a tool for a, a small project for kids and for educators, I definitely think this is a viable solution. I wouldn't recommend it if you needed the stronger structural uh, you know, aluminum here. The aluminum's not gonna bend at all, um, whereas I can take this and eventually break it at the layer line. Now that took quite a bit of force, but you know, you're not gonna break the aluminum and most of the time, you're not actually applying that type of stress to, uh, and I can't even break this one. So um, you're not generally applying that sort of stress when you're prototyping something or you're building something. If you do, certainly go with the aluminum. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you give 3D plastic extrusion a try. I was quite successful with it in my project, and I think you'd probably find that it works well for yours. If you do, leave some comments. I'd love to hear back from you and find out if it worked for you or if you're using it in an education setting. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and have a great day.